Our final session of the day is uh, with a trio of branch organizations. Uh, Brian Madison is the chairman of the CWA in the UK. Thomas Drott is with B BTG Minden, BTG Minden in Germany. Uh, and Mark de Graaf is joining us from Bovag, from the, ne from the Netherlands. And we have a few topics and themes we want to run by these guys uh, in a panel discussion. Uh, your input is also very welcome. Uh, so please put any themes or topics you wish to discuss in the chat. Um, Brian, I'd like to start with, uh, with you. Can you tell us how the market in the UK is organized? Is, is Brian on screen? <laughs> I think you've still muted your, uh, your microphone. Well, while Brian figures uh, this out, maybe Thomas, uh, you can tell us a bit about the German market. Oh, I, can you hear me now? I can, Brian, it's you. <laughs> yeah, well, sorry about that. All right, no problem. Uh, okay, well, the UK market is very peculiar in the whole of Europe. It is. In, in as much as we have, I would reckon, the highest number of unregulated, non-compliant hand car washes. Uh, the police have estimated there could be up to 20,000. 80,000. 20,000. 20, sorry. Compared to about three and a half thousand uh, regulated automated car watches on four courts. Um, there are only one or two other specialist car cleaning companies, car washing companies, like uh, the International Car Wash Group, formerly IMO, which has about 250 uh, separate conveyor washes around the UK. Um, but by far the largest is this hand car wash. And this has really been accelerating over the last 15 years. It's made a massive dent into the automated car wash market, which we reckon to have contracted by at least a third um, over this time, far fewer rollovers, jet washes. But we may just at last be beginning to see some proper enforcement of regulations taking place. And this is a tax evasion. They don't pay VAT. They're not a registered company. They don't pay the minimum wage to their staff. Um, it's about uh, other labor abuse, human trafficking and slavery. Uh, Unseen, one of the charities that uh, concentrates on human trafficking and slavery, reckons that out of 2,000 calls they had in 2019, over 40% were from hand car washing. So you can see the extent of the problem we have. Uh, there is also the um, damage to the environment, uh, toxic waste, including acids, going into storm drains, rather into proper foul sewers with separators. And so this has been an absolute disaster for anything to do with the automated car wash industry. But as I say, I think with the efforts of the Car Watch Association and others and charities, uh, we're beginning to see uh, perhaps the, un the hand car washes uh, starting to recede. And of course, with Brexit, uh, we have a new immigration bill. And certainly, uh, the uh, government is suggesting that up to 800,000 East Europeans could have gone home uh, at the start of Brexit and during the pandemic. So right. we're so already Brian, seeing... Brian, if, if I can interrupt you, about the, the 3,500 uh, automated uh, washes, are they usually located at gas stations or are, they, are those standalone sites? Is it, is it rollovers or jet washes? Right. What's it, big? Yeah, it's, it's um, I would say, 90, 95%. Are on uh, gas stations. Um, we have uh, only something like 2,000 rollovers, uh, but we do have uh, well over 4,000, maybe 4,500 jet washes on those car stations because some have a multiple of rollovers and jet washes. Quite often, one rollover, one or two jet washes. So maybe the Brits like to wash their cars themselves. <laughs> they always did. It was the Saturday morning occupation. 
But now uh, we are time precious. That Saturday morning occupation is taken with taking Fred to play um, uh, football or the girl to the gym, tennis. And so uh, family life is, um, is very time consuming. So what we can see, the latest trend is, is not sadly in some ways for the belt conveyor type of um, super duper car wash. It is more for multiple bays of really good jet washing, four or five bays. Right. Then people don't have to wait to wash their car. Right. Thomas, if we, uh, if we can switch to you, what's the situation like in Germany? Well, um, first, the uh, warm belt comes from the BTG in Germany. Thank you. And, um, yeah, um, the BTG um, has been the only trade association for roundabout car wash since the early 60s and the last century. So um, we just look at the car wash for a long time. Um, in the last years, the... Um, the uh, number of car wash has declined in, in Germany. So uh, it's uh, a really good development. In this year, actually, we have estimated, it's no sure number, but it's estimated well, around about uh, 2,400 tunnels, around about 2,400 to 2,800 jet washers. By the jet washers, we just uh, count equipments with um, more than four um, jet wash places. And uh, we have um, additional around about 14,000 rollovers. The rollovers are situated uh, at gas stations usually. And uh, the rollovers partly belong to the oil companies and are see, uh, leased to the uh, to the operator of the gas station. In some cases, they also directly belong to the gas station owners or operators who run uh, this business on their own. Uh, the tunnels are mostly owned by private people who have one to five um, car wash uh, equipments, car wash tunnels. Um, and there are some um, some um, medium-sized owners with more than five uh, car wash uh, equipments and uh, only some very few larger chain stores um, with a chain of car washes best known it might be Mr. Wash or Imo or Clean Car. Yeah. But most are in private hands. Um, on the other hand, the uh, number of car washers per uh, car per calendar year has unfortunately declined. It's uh, getting less uh, during the times. Uh, some decades before, we had around about 10, 12, 14 washers per car per year. And um, nowadays, it's around about six to eight washers per car per, per year. On the other hand, um, um, the, the wishes of the customers are getting higher and they um, seem to take higher programs, not only the basic wash, but uh, premium car wash programs. Um, the declining of the um, uh, of the number of car washes per year might be because uh, some of the people have not only one car but the second and the third kind. Those cars are not used as much as the first main car, so it's also washed uh, okay. seldom. Thank you, uh, thank you, Thomas. I'd like to switch to uh, Mark de Graaf for a bit. Uh, Mark here with the BOVAG in the Netherlands. Can you tell us about the situation uh, in Holland or in the Netherlands, I should say? Uh, of course I can. Um, uh, I, I think the, the, the car wash market here in the Netherlands is uh, really uh, developed the last couple of years. Uh, and 
if you uh, com uh, uh, compare it to the UK and Germany, I think our markets uh, are like a bit like uh, Germany, not like the UK. Um, we see uh, a lot of. In the past, we have seen a lot of car uh, car washes uh, from a, a, a roll rollover type. Uh, but now we see a more professional market, and we see a lot of big, big, big tunnel, tunnels here. And what you see typically see in the Netherlands is um, the the bigger car washes have uh, interior um, belts, and that's developing. Uh, and we see a lot of uh, interior uh, vacuum places here. Yeah, uh, and that's also different from uh, the other markets. Yeah. Uh, and I think this is, this is something you can, can compare with uh, Mr. Bosch in uh, Germany. Right. And I think what goes for all of these uh, markets uh, is that it's not like in the USA where there's uh, consolidation happening and there's only the bigger chains, but there's like the, the mama and papa stores are, are still out there, right? Yeah. It's very uh, different from the in the US. The, in the US, you see a lot of big change. Yeah, uh, do you think uh, that'll be happening in Europe uh, anytime soon? I'll ask that, uh, maybe Brian, you can answer that. I think that um, certainly IMO in the UK have decreased the number of conveyor washes from about 280 to 240 because of the unfair competition from hand car washes who at the beginning were offering uh, a hand car wash for £2.50 uh, compared to the minimum on a conveyor or a rollover of, say, four or five pounds. So that has uh, had a very bad effect on the car wash market. And I don't think I've yet seen any tunnel washes who are likely to set up, partly because we're such a small island, such a dense population, and relatively, the land is extremely expensive. So, in the States, where you've got, uh, maybe even Germany, where you've got a huge swathe of land, uh, you might be able to buy this at a relatively modest price and invest in a really upmarket um, tunnel wash or, or belt. We don't see that yet in the UK. No. Uh, Thomas, can I ask you if the, uh, so we've heard in the past two days that the express wash is uh, growing, that you're, when you're going through a tunnel, there's, uh, it's unmanned. Do you think that's something uh, that'll, that'll grow in, uh, in Germany? It might be, yeah. There's a small trend going to this express wash, um, but um, you can't say that uh, that is the only future. Uh, lots of um, operators still keep on to the personal car wash, uh, especially in the pre-cleaning area. Uh, the trend uh, in Germany is similar to the Netherlands, going to the indoor car washes with vacuumating in a hall and so on. That's a clear trend uh, which needs a lot of car washes during the year, around about 80,000 at least we think that's a relatively uh, clear trend going this way and the express wash uh, is just a little bit experimentating. Right, well who knows uh, where we'll be in, uh, in about 10 years. Um, Mark, can I ask you about the effects of the coronavirus on the, um, on the car wash industry? Uh, luckily, we we weren't, we weren't uh, affected here as much as uh, a lot of other uh, uh, yeah, countries. in the Netherlands, all I the car washes were allowed to uh, to, yeah, we, to we remain were, open. All the, all, the time, all the time we were open, we had some some issues to uh, to clean. So we 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 uh, closed past uh, part of our vacuum areas uh, because of the the, the distance uh, to the customers. Uh, but we are lo very lucky. If you compare it to German or Belgium, Belgium was very terrible for uh, the operators. They had to close, uh, and I think 
uh, we were lucky. And I think it was special for the customers. It was something to go there because most of the shops were closed. Uh, so we were lucky. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, our numbers uh, are lower than before, but we're still lucky that yeah. we are open and uh, see, uh, see some car customers come in. Yeah, well, thank you so much for your input, uh, gentlemen. Um, I think Beta Game Minden is uh, still on the platform if you want to dis continue the discussion with uh, Thomas. Uh, and you can find Mark and Brian under speakers. So thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you.